We are two crazies from South Africa, that's Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. Join us on another exciting trip with a family all the way from Cave Key to Allen's Key. We are approaching Cave Key and it's a little bit late so you can see the sun is setting very very nice and we're going to have a huge super yacht waiting for us there. So we need to get through this cut there's a little bit of wind, a little bit of waves, but the, the current is busy going in. So it's getting to high tide. It's actually low tide going to high tide, so it's mid tide. I don't know what to say that. Sorry, I'm not I'm not that that good in navy terminologies so, or anyway. You've got only the Genoa up and the enclosure is down, sun is out, so why? Just look at that. It is crazy the weather. So that is a front that's trying to push up. And this is the front that's coming from America, from Florida side. And the big one is actually coming from that side. It will hit us tonight at 11 o'clock. So we need to find space for the blow that's coming and this one might actually be a blow it's going to go up to 30 knots of wind so that that's going to be crazy but we are uh, anchored right next to little holes little hole pond island or a little hole pond key which is the island of johnny Depp where he got married it's actually his island but he got married married there as well and it's very shallow, shallow here. Yeah? I think we got something like this much under the queue. So one of the reasons why we anchored here is we want to get, because that is, that's open sea. But the wind, there's a big blow coming tonight, which will come from that direction. So it looks like funny where we are now. But it's, uh, it's about 30 knots. So that's, I think that we can say that's a very big blow in the Bahamas. So we are on this on this shadow side for now, even though the wind is now there, but it's going to move, shift all the way to the other side. How do you like my shirt? I think you guys can have go and have a look. You can buy our shirts now. It's pretty awesome. Pietro spent a lot of time on the designs. What happened? What's going on? I know broke, so as we dropped anchor, anchor, the bridle broke, so we don't have an anchor at the moment, so I'm the anchor with this little steering wheel and these two pedals. On a 23 knot wind, casting to 30. At the moment, the bow goes 60 degrees from the wind, you can't turn it back, you have to do a flip. So, you have to be very wakey wakey. And you don't want to get too close to that shore, you don't want to get too close to the rocks here behind you, and you don't want to get too close to the, so, uh, the beach. So we are in a situation where the bridle has snapped, if I understand it correctly. So Frick and Pietru are trying to replace it or fix it or make a plan. Um, not sure what happened. Let's go out, it's very windy. So the bridle has snapped. Yeah. 
big problem. <coughs> Luckily it was here, not <laughs> while we had the previous angle. <laughs> We're getting a 36 maximum and it's constantly above 25, so well, 29 already. Hey, <laughs> I hope you guys can hear me that we are in the, in the blow. This is almost close to the peak. We've got already 36, 36 knots of wind, but we're very close, much more protected here. My bridle broke, so we still need to need to fix this. And it is basically the anchor that was hitting the line when we had rough seas. So we did not see that. But we've got a the mooring bridle up, so we do have a spare bridle. Not what it was supposed to use, but this is the original bridle that's coming with the boat, so we just put that on. But the wind is blowing. And it is... It is really crazy. It is... <laughs> Not sure you can hear me. Can you hear me now? But yeah, the wind is... It's pumping. And you can see... You can see the sea just from there to here is already quite big waves but out there it's crazy that's the big Atlantic Ocean and the bridal saga continues lots of splicing which fortunately the captain is a pro at doing uh -uh, no I'm a pro at YouTube <laughs> Uh, very neat job. No, I don't think. Well, it's all hidden away under the water. Yeah, well, that's. Okay, so what the eye doesn't see. Exactly. So more. we're gonna go for that one. <laughs> now, put all my faith in you. He's the he's the splicing king on the boat. I know absolutely nothing about it. And I've got one of those gloves that you can use. That you can push the needle through. Yeah, but I think this one is a little bit more tough. Okay, and the whole project is supervised by Eben. A newbie. Interesting this. <laughs> and it is freezing cold. And in obviously in extreme weather and circumstances, these things happen. Yeah. But the weather has subsided a lot much better and it's still freezing cold as you can see foully and i believe Double there's layer. a there's another <laughs> layer under there it's freezing cold and even is also freezing his, freezing his i need to go get some heat again things off but that looks like a very neat job captain no, thank you you can sleep peacefully it looks very good. hey darling can i tell you what's been on my mind Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light Hey darling We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Everyone is watching our our next video. Hey, you guys must view it on YouTube so we can get the view, man. <laughs> so, and we felt bumps. Look at this. Sisu is grounded officially. So we <laughs> we anchored, and it was pretty windy and pretty. The, the current was going wrong all over the place and so we anchored and we can s we saw the bank so the bank is quite far from us the sand bank but 
obviously not far enough. Are here at the ground sea. And we are going to go to the rapids or I don't know. Google Maps says washing machine. So you start around here somewhere and then you go through the washing machine and then it spits you out. Looks like you're going to go into the sea but there's a sandbank in the front that's going to stop you disappearing. And then you take a walk around and you start all over again. So this is the outlet. Very blue, blue, blue water. I think we arrive here at high tide so the water is not flowing anymore. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> oh. It just floats. <laughs> oh, we are already through. Uh, I need to get out. <laughs> the current is quite strong here. So, best thing is don't fight it, just go 90 degrees with the current or swim 90 degrees. Ooh. And it's damn deep over here. Still, I cannot stand. Ooh. <laughs> I cannot stand. It's too deep. Apparently, we have a mermaid. Look at that. To the open air Near the countryside is so pretty With the wind blowing in your hair We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand We anchored here at Norman's Key and it's it's going to be a very good sunset but look at this super calm water and right over there is Escobar's plane wreck Was the airplane? Weiss me There you go Yeah, It's going to be better Look at that Sisu and that is the wreck of Escobar, but there's a story to that. Pietro will tell you more about it. For years, the tiny island was the epicenter of a drug smuggling ring, and there were many stories behind this wreck. The most known story is that the old World War II C-46 plane, owned by Pablo Escobar, was thought to be carrying cocaine when it landed just short of the runway in 1980. But another urban legend, which a lot of people don't know about, is that it was flown to Norman's Key by an Englishman known as British Andy. Andy had stumbled upon this relic in Florida and learned that it was up for sale. He had a grand plan in mind, to sell it to none other than Carlos Leda, the notorious leader of the Medellin drug cartel, who he thought might be interested in it to walk cargo with. Andy, who had a drinking problem, was no stranger to the taking a six-pack along for company on his flights. One fine morning, feeling a bit tipsy, he decided to visit the local airport. He fired up the old gold to practice takeoffs and landings, commonly known as touch and goes. Needless to say, things went horribly wrong when he miscalculated the start of the runway. They throttled up, but after hitting a barrier, they lost control and had ultimately belly flopped into the shallow water. Andy and his unsuspecting Colombian passenger emerged without the scratch. There we go. Everyone in. 
eating out tonight. The ladies are spoiled. Ah. It's just because we don't have any more wine on Sisu. <laughs> so we need to go find some wine. Entering Normanski Marina. What a lovely sunset. The pics is secure with a dinghy anchor. And we are off to McDuff's. And from here on, darkness. Oh, wait, 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 there's a little light at the end of this. Well, it's not the end. We're back in the gardens. On our way back to Tepex. That was a very good dinner. A little bit pricey. and get in that car. 